Hello and a warm welcome to a brand new season of The Big Debate on SABC2 and SAFM. Coming to you live from Shine Studios in the heart of Josie. I'm Ridi Klabi. Now, the biggest criminals in South Africa are not car hijackers. Rather, they sit in corporate boardrooms and top government offices. By capturing the state, they have looted billions of rands, money that could build 3,000 schools. That's the story of state capture. Some believe that the Guptas and President Jacob Zuma are the worst offenders. Others argue that the state was captured from the time of Cecil John Rhodes. Whichever is true, the losers are you and me. We lose cash and we lose trust in government. From who is appointed in parliament to who is arrested by the police. But the question is, how do they get away with it? And what can we do about it? Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by Temba Maseko, former head of government communications, now spokesperson for Business Leadership South Africa, Mzwane Lemanyi, who recently purchased the Gupta's media empire, ANN7, and the New Age, using money loaned by the Gupta family, and is a former head of the Black Management Forum. Fakie Mentor, ANC defector, who has recounted how she was offered a ministerial post in return for helping the Guptas. Floyd Shivambu, Deputy President of the Economic Freedom Fighters, and he also is a member of the State Capture Inquiry in Parliament. Anne Benstein, Director of the Centre for Development and Enterprise, and also a board member of the Oppenheimer Family Foundation. Lucky Montana is the former CEO of the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, that's PRASA. Henny van Furen, author of Apartheid Guns and Money, which covers looting by apartheid era arms companies. And last but not least, Zuki Swa White, a feminist activist from Vets University. And in the audience, we have worker leaders, Zuelin Zimavavi, Dennis George, business people like Gaten McKenzie, Dani Sabaloi, activists including Mark Haywood, investigative journalists, Skonati Manjanja and Susan Comrie. And of course, most importantly, at least for me, we have communities from across the country who are also going to have a voice today. Welcome to all of you. <laughs> and you at home, you at home can have your say. Contact us on Facebook or Twitter or give us a missed call and we'll call you right back. We really want to hear your questions and we want to know what state capture and corruption mean to you. But before we start our debate, take a look at this. South Africa was built on mining. Gold, diamonds and coal have made mine owners extremely rich. Companies benefited from their close relations with the government. Thousands of workers who put in their blood and sweat underground lost their lives. Mining families are poor to this day. The Mpumalanga coal fields supply ESCOM with power. The names of new miners echo around the coal fields. Alongside Oppenheimer and De Beers, we now have Ramaphosa, Gupta, Zuma. Moses Masango worked for 25 years at the Optimum Mine, now owned by the Gupta family and President Jacob Zuma's son, Dudezane. Despite mining coal, Moses lives without power. Workers are not allowed to use coal from the mine. When Moses started working on the mine, it was owned by huge multinational firm Glencore. In 2012, the mine's profits were down. They started firing workers. Moses lost his job. Glencore approached ESCOM CEO Brian Molefe for more cash for their coal. Molefe turned them down. Enter the Guptas. The game changed. ESCOM transferred half a billion rands for coal to a Gupta company, enabling them to buy the mine. ESCOM then stood surety for a further 1.5 billion rands. Molefe appeared to have used his influence and state resources to enrich the Gupta family, the business partners of President Zuma's son. This is what has come to be known as state capture. How does it work? 
you have to actually go out of your way to weaken um, state organs. That you do by actually targeting good, honest, hardworking civil servants. Once you hound them out, then you would replace them with people that will basically do your bidding. Evidence is emerging that this is exactly what the Guptas tried at government institutions from Metro Rail and Prasa to Transnet, Denal and SAA. At Transnet, they received billions in commissions for a train tender. Where they failed to get their way, they seem to have had the power to fire CEOs and ministers. Mzwanele Jimmy Manye managed one billion rand of government advertising allegedly targeted by the Guptas. He now heads a media empire acquired with their backing. He defends their actions. They have disrupted the eating of the white monopoly capital. This is why the Guptas are hated. The Guptas have found white monopoly capital at the main table eating alone. And they are part of this now. Journalist Sabelo Skiti has documented state capture. He rejects the view that the Guptas are good for transformation. There's no need for people to capture the state and use that argument um, as a red herring. Jimmy, look at your conscience and look at whether what you are being paid is sufficient for you to contribute to selling South Africa. Magda Virchetska is one of the richest women in South Africa. She fired KPMG from her investment company over their links with the Guptas. The state capture project has made every South African poorer. The other part that is not really thoroughly discussed is what, it, what, what, this, what happens to people's faith in democracy. And Mark in, Swirling co-authored uh, a report on state capture called Betrayal of the noble Promise. The project of political leadership, the disillusionment with political leadership is actually going to take much, much, is going to cause much, much more severe damage in the long run. Back on the Mpumalanga coal fields, mine worker Moses Masango blames his continued unemployment on state capture. Just All right, after seeing that, we're going to do things a little differently. Instead of me asking the question, we're going to go straight to our audience member. I believe we've got Madigana. You've got a question based on what you've just seen. Go ahead. Mzonele yes. Mani uh, says the Guptas are disrupting a white monopoly capital. But isn't it true that the Guptas and the white monopoly capital are disrupting the economy to the detriment of the poor? Thank you very much, Madikana. Zonele, how do you answer that? Yeah, let, let's start by firstly um, expressing disappointment in terms of the research done by the big debate. Because when you started in your insight, you start by saying, I, I bought this, this, this business with the money from the Guptas. That's not what is vendor financing. Vendor financing means that uh, uh, in my particular situation, there is not one cent that went from the Guptas to me. Not one cent. What is going to happen is that out of the proceeds of the business, I'm going to pay off their debt. So that's the one. Now, in terms of the question that is being asked, uh, I think it's important to, uh, <coughs> uh, to agree with the fact that the st state capture uh, is actually very bad for South Africa. Uh, there's not one argument that can be made to say state capture is good. Up. But the issue that uh, uh, is uh, uh, not getting discussed in this country is the fact that you have people that have already be co been convicted of, a, of a bad business practices, but nothing happens to them. If you go to the Competitions Commission and you see white monopoly capital crimes that are there, that get sugar-coated and get called collusion and get called all these soft names and got, get called in very, uh, 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 insider, tra insider trading uh, 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 issues, that get given all kinds of fancy names, that is a problem that is eating the... Uh we are going to get into that into our next theme, but I absolutely have to ask you, what is it that the Guptas are doing for transformation? The question basically says that the Guptas and white monopoly capital, let's call it that, are just the same problem. It's a continuum. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think, I think the, 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 the issue uh, around the Guptas, the Guptas 
the Guptas are, do not qualify as, as black people for BE purposes. So therefore, the presence of the Guptas per se is not transformation. Uh, as it were. This but is in why that insert, you say they are coming in to disrupt white monopoly capital. Yeah, no, I want no. to understand in what way. Let me tell you how they disrupted it. Yeah, that is correct. In this way, if you go to ESCOM, for instance, ESCOM, you would find white monopoly capital eating big time. We're what not is disputing that. No, no, the question is how are the Guptas disrupting yeah, but this what I'm that telling scenario? You. This is what I'm telling you. They go to ESCOM. If you go to ESCOM, this is where white monopoly capital is eating in ESCOM. Companies like BHP, yes. Piratin, Anglo, Exaro, all of them. What they have there, they have what is called cost plus models. In other words, with this cost plus model, ESCOM has to pay for the sinking of the shaft. ESCOM has to pay for the development to get to the coal. And then ESCOM has to you pay for the product. You are talking about established business, now, but we want you to, to respond I think to the group. We'll come back to you then. We'll come back to you because those themes that you're raising are it part of our themes that we're going to deal with. But I wanted you to account for your statement about how the Guptas are disrupting. Yeah, but, but you must give me a chance that. to answer. There are 10 other people here. But you must need give to go me a chance to, to answer. Point. I have given you a chance. We'll come back to you to complete your point. <laughs> and I want to focus on your relationship. You are on the board of the Brenthurst Foundation, started by the Oppenheimers. The Oppenheimers, mining, Anglo. Mining has such a terrible history in this country. Executives and companies making billions of rands built on the back of inequality and poverty of black people. So does established business like Anglo, like Oppenheimers, need to take moral responsibility for poverty, for inequality, conditions which are used to justify state capture? Look, apartheid was a terrible system and white business were a part of that system as were many other people. Um, now, we're 23 years into a democracy. I'm interested in how we move forward and deal with poverty today. But we can't deal with poverty without so acknowledging that the people who benefited I have agree. not done mining their bit to transform our society. Big mining companies benefited greatly under apartheid. They did pay their taxes, by the way, which is more than we can say for some other people. Um, but, uh, well, so, I agree. I think there were terrible laws under apartheid and black South Africans were treated appallingly. And that's why we have a legacy of appalling uh, poverty, terrible education, and all sorts of things that we know about. But those conditions that we all know about, does, should established business take moral responsibility for it? And is that why we're here today? I think established business went to the Truth Commission and a lot of them apologized for what they'd done. A lot of them said, <laughs> Not enough. Okay. A, a Black lot of Floyd, I want you to come in. I want you to come in. Uh, we haven't heard how the Guptas are disrupting uh, the situation. 30 seconds. Tell us what you think. Look, I think let's put this in context that South Africa had been captured since uh, 1652 when the colonial settlers arrived in South Africa. And what 1994 was supposed to represent was the reclamation of a captured economy and captured nation. But what the ANC has been trying to do since 1994 is to substitute the white capturers with black capturers. And now they're trying to substitute under Jogab Zuma with the Guptas. And the Guptas are corrupt, decidedly corrupt. They are looting our state resources and they zombify individuals like Jimmy Mani. That's why it speaks like he was speaking now, to, to, to just defend them like All right, look. What okay. okay. Are you captured? Are you ca All right, okay, we'll get back to that. There'll be plenty of time. Are you captured or uncaptured? Are you affected by corruption? You can buzz us, tweet us, Facebook us. After the break, we talk about the impact of state capture on you and me. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Big Debate, coming to you live from Joburg. We're also live on SAFM. We're discussing state capture. Now, we learned recently in the news that our trains were actually captured, or rather that billions of rands for trains were paid as commission to Gupta-linked companies. That was in Transnet. There was also an attempt to capture Prasa train contracts, the ones used for Metro Rail. Now, let's take a look at some commuters who actually use those trains. Pindi Lentlapo wakes up at 3 a.m. every morning to catch two trains to work. She's worried about her safety on the trains, so she always moves with colleagues. Often, the trains break down or don't pitch. 
That's what happened with her second train on the day we filmed. So she has to get a taxi instead. I don't understand what he planning in Zeranjan. I understand in King Amaivela once. But if it's a repetition of the same exercise every day, I fail to understand which why I'm having a contingency plan or when I see must be bad. All right, let's hear from you, Lucky. You are former CEO of Prasa. Was Prasa captured with money that could have been used to improve conditions for somebody like Pindile, or did you start try and stop the capture? Well, not at all. I think uh, I dealt with the state. Uh, I, well, I don't believe firstly in the concept, concept of state capture. I think that when advocate uh, Tulima Donsela said, released a report, she said the state of capture. She didn't say state capture. And I think there was a very good reason for that. Because she knows that if we define a modern state, the key functions of a modern state, you cannot attribute everything that we've been, discussed, we've been discussing today or even in the public as state capture. Now, the Guptas have tried at Prasa, and everyone knows in 2012, not now, I know today we have people making a lot of noise. So fashionable today to attack the Guptas. Okay, tell us what I've, they tried to I've, do and what they did. They tried to manipulate, of course, the tender for Prasa in 2012, and I threw them out, and it created quite a lot of, 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 of conflict, created a lot of problems. But uh, the problems of Metro Rail, as you see them today, and I don't want to speak on behalf of, of Prasa, they date back to the time when the government took a decision in the 1980s not to invest any more in tr rail transport and not only passenger. I'm also referring to, uh, to freight uh, mm. transport. The result of that was the growth of the minibus taxi industry on the passenger side and the, the increase on trucks on the roadside. So I think the system collapsed as far back as 1992. What we were trying to do was to salvage that because if uh, you don't solve the problems of metro rail in particular, not only will you put a burden on the traveling commuters, but what you'll do is that you'll put a break on our urban development. We can have an argument about whether buying unsuitable trains are the right response to the condition that you've just described, but we don't have time for that. Let's park it for the moment. No, no, but that, but uh, let's deal with this at a conceptual level. Uh, Lucky Mundana says he doesn't believe in state capture talking about the public protector report, state of capture report. What's your take? Have you had experience of it? Do you think it's real? It is real. And the United Nations itself has grappled with the, state, the, the, the concept of state capture. And it's not happening only in South Africa. And it has not only happened in South Africa. The oligarchs in Russia have taken the state over. It has happened in other parts of the world. It's a scientific concept researched and it exists. And it exists in South Africa. It happened pre-94. It is happening in a massive scale post-94. The saddest thing is we gave people of South Africa hope, false hope, in 1994. To date, the people of South Africa signed a social contract with the ANC saying we are giving you the authority to remove us from the shackles and oppression of economic injustices of the past. To date, the ANC had done worse than what the apartheid regime has done. It exists. <laughs> Okay. Let, let me bring it in here, Zuki. So are we having the right conversation? Should there be a contest, a contest between old capture and new capture? How do you see this? Is the letu? Africa. 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 I think I'm quite disturbed, I'm ready, by um, the, the lightness in which we're dealing with even the issue of apartheid. I mean, Anne is saying that, you know, it was something that was terrible policies and right, and the TRC people apologized and, you know, we have statements such as Ms. Mentor saying that, you know, what's happening now is worse than what's happening in apartheid. I think that is, 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 is criminal. Right, the kind of the kind of thinking and, and th that we are having around you know this thing that happened and because you must understand when we put this in context, right, as Fred has said, state capture there can't be talk of state capture outside of uh, 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 locating our disposition, right, in 1652. 
-hmm. right? And so 19, 1994 happened, and as uh, 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 the, the, the revolution was suspended and betrayed. So our, my position, right, is, some, um, 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 is to say that, one, um, state capture uh, 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 is date back significantly two, and for me, it's kind of like there's no state that's, no, that's not captured. The issue is not state capture per se, but the issue is um, in whose interest is the state being captured for? And we know that even, um, 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 we know that currently our understanding of, of, of state capture does not, the, the interest, it's not capturing the interest of the landless dispossessed Azanian masses, right? And even the, que the, the question of the Guptas uh, um, um, is not to say that, um, it would be irresponsible to say that actually the Guptas are not an issue, right? But it would also be careless of us to insist and continue to insist that this is the biggest problem about state capture we have in this country. I want to bring you in here. False. I want to bring you in here, Temba. You were head of GCIS. Uh, you were there during the Mbegi era. People are saying this is not just starting with uh, with the Guptas, that it's uh, becoming fashionable to just put the spotlight on uh, on the Guptas. There are a lot of deals that happened during that time that were also uh, uh, problematic. Tell us about your observation of state capture. Surely you didn't just experience it or observe it when you got that call from the president. Let's simplify what we mean by state capture. It's essentially about an elite, few business people working with government people to get deals out of government for their own personal enrichment. They don't worry about the poor. So business people, government leaders, working together to get deals, get your tax money for their own personal benefit. In my experience, it was a question of the Guptas coming to me demanding government money, your money, to be used for their own private interests. So what this simply means, it's not concepts or anything. It's essentially about the ruling elite, the people that we elect, the people who are running businesses coming together, sometimes behind closed doors, discussing contracts, discussing deals, discussing laws, how to break laws, so that they can make money. That's what- Did it happen capture. during the Mbegi era? I think that it, it, it dates back a long time ago because, and it happens all over the world, as it's been said. Business people generally lobby government so that laws are changed to suit their interests. So it has a particular history. So when what Cyril and Tokyo were deployed into business, was that part what, of state capture? It, well, it, it wasn't state capture per se, but let, uh, let's, under <laughs> no, no, let's understand this. Business people working with politicians to steal money from the state coffers. And that has happened before. What makes the Gupta era more important is that when your own government, government elected by ordinary workers, ordinary people, uses the power that we give them to steal money from the state capture, from the state coffers. That's what makes this even more worrisome. All right, help us bring it all together, especially the historical context. Because personally, as a South African, I'm not surprised that the apartheid state looted in order to further that ideology and, people, and keep people like myself uh, uh, poor. But just bring it all in, the historical context and uh, the elite and that toxic relationship between business and politics. Yeah, really, I think one of the problems we have is that we criminalize the activities of the poor, and I think we don't focus on the crimes of the very wealthy in this country. And there's... there's there's absolutely no doubt, if we go back to the apartheid period, that large, very large corporations, very wealthy people, wealthy people work together with the apartheid state to accumulate a massive amount of wealth. Um, we've seen that network not only in South Africa, but corporations across the globe. We must remember it's not only South Africans who made money out of a crime against humanity. And, and I think what's extraordinary, when we start to join the bigger dots together, we see that some of the same arms companies that supplied weapons to the apartheid state that resulted in the loss of lives of tens of thousands of people in Southern Africa were the same companies that the Mbeki administration was prepared to sign an arms deal with. That arms deal in the late 1990s resulted in the fact that the government said it didn't have money for antiretrovirals that cost the lives of almost 300,000 people. And if we start to thread that, thread that further, we find ourselves, somebody who was implicated in those arms deals is a man by the name of Jacob Zuma, who has spent the last 20 years trying to undermine many of our democratic institutions precisely because he doesn't want to be prosecuted by a weak prosecuting authority which has now been created. We've closed down the anti-corruption agencies when people like Ms. Ms. Mentor was in parliament, they shut them, those institutions down, and so we aren't able to control this dynamic of state capture and democracy suffers. Floyd, what are we gonna do about this? Look, I think what has to happen is to introduce durable anti-capitalist uh, 
program that has to defend South Africa. The, re the, the problem is that people think that it's either or, that if you are opposing the Guptas, you are therefore with white monopoly capital. If you're opposing white monopoly capital, you are therefore with the Guptas. We're opposing capitalism in all its manifestations. And the program of the EFF that says, let us expropriate first our land without composition is a strategic move towards that attainment of economic freedom in South Africa. And the second issue is to take back the financial institutions, the wealth, the mines, and all of those things and give them to the hands of the people so that they can be able to industrialize, create jobs for as many people as possible, and then we're able to live happily, all of us in South Africa. All right, we'll expand on those ideas here from our activist Mark Haywood is here, and I want to hear from you, Anne, because you've got particular ideas about the role of the state, and, um, and Mr. Manu will also give you a chance to speak in our next segment. Is state capture an economic crime? If so, who should go to jail? What can we do about it? And how about using our X and our Y? Are you intrigued? Well, don't go away. Well, welcome back to the big debate on state capture. My name is Ridi Klabi and we are in Bramfantin, Johannesburg. Now, can you and I do anything to unseat those who steal our tax money? Every five years we have an X, but is that enough? What about Y? I'm talking about our youth. Let's start with a young person then who's in the audience. Can young people do anything in between elections to discipline unruly politicians and business leaders? I believe we do have a question from a young person in the audience. Prue, you've got the mic. Go ahead, please. Hi, Reedy. Mm. I want to know, how do you and can you prosecute state capture? And once you've prosecuted, what's the penalty? All right. Uh, there was a bit of uh, noise there. Can you repeat your question? Sure. I was saying, how do you and can you prosecute state capture? And if the people are found guilty, then what is the penalty? I think, Henry, we can deal with that because you've documented this historical apartheid state capture bringing in the multinationals. So what recourse is there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that th we left helpless in a sense of all the crimes that happened in the late apartheid period, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and I disagree with Anne, never really dug down into the nature of those networks. It was the original sin and the original crime that contaminated our democratic politics. And I, and I think it's, it's crucial to have a state that has the appetite to do this. If the state wished to, we would have the, we have the finances, we have the investigators, we would have the intellectual power in a country like South Africa to be able to take on, and we have the law to take on interest groups, whether they date from the apartheid period or the current group of, of state capturers that are active today. But it's precisely because what we've, this group of people, and that cuts right across the board, th this group of elites have tried to hollow out our democratic institutions, take away the capacity to criminalize elite crimes, and it leaves us vulnerable. And I want your response here, because Floyd spoke about a system where, that the EFF advocates, the role of the state, where resources of the country go. You have particular ideas about uh, the role of the state. Do you believe in the developmental state? Can we get anywhere with uh, increased uh, uh, role of the state? Look, firstly, I believe in the rule of law. And anyone who's committed a crime should go, should be prosecuted, have due process, and if they're found guilty, they should go to jail, irrespective of what position they hold in South Africa today. So I'm in favor of that. And we need to get out of the rumors, the leaks, the allegations. We need some facts that are proven in court and people need to go to jail. So we need a public prosecutor who will actually take his job seriously. And we need some good policemen who get on the job of investigating. Certainly I would favor current crimes, but if they're <coughs> old crimes, that's fine as well. So criminals should go to jail. Um, that's the first thing. This, this, uh, your second okay. question? J just think um, about it for now. We'll come to you in a moment. We're going to our audience members. We'll start with you, Mark Gayton. Get ready. We're coming to you afterwards. Mark, what do you think? I think it's very important to draw a connection between state capture. Okay, we need a mic. We need a microphone for Mark. Does anyone have a microphone? Very quickly, Gayton, get ready. Thank I'm coming to much. you next. A microphone for Gayton while we're ready. I, I think in this debate it's very important to draw the connection between state capture and the consequences for millions of ordinary people in this country. You know, I've spent the last few weeks at a trial in Limpopo in Polakwani concerning the death of a five-year-old boy, Michael Kamape, who went to school and went to the toilet at break time and fell into a pit toilet and drowned at the bottom of that pit toilet, a five-year-old boy. That school had been requesting new toilets for four years, 
in that same year, 2012, when 2014, when Michael died, two and a half billion rand was stolen from the Limpopo Education Department. So when we have this discussion about state capture, we must also realize that it's not just the PRASA and the ESCOM, it's also parts of the health department, it's parts of the education <laughs> department. And, and we have to put a stop to it because otherwise our health system is going to be destroyed, our education system is going to be destroyed. So join the dots, but join the dots between the rich elite that are stealing and the poor people who are paying the price for the theft. Kate. Oh, you've got a microphone, you've got a microphone. Gayton, what should business do? Does this concern you in any case? What about big deals that are being done between business and politicians? And I know you wanted to respond uh, to Anne as well. Go ahead. Yes, I think a terrible thing just happened here. Anne, you are Jewish, you are Jew. You cannot come here and say to us black people we must move on if you are still celebrating the Holocaust every year. How will, how will you feel if I tell Jewish people they must move on? I will be charged tomorrow, uh, my name will be everywhere. So you must desist and refrain from telling black people to move on from today on. I want to make it very clear to you. To the second point I want to make. Hold on. The problem that we're having in the African National Congress and the other parties talking about state capture, they themselves don't even know what is state capture, so how can you stop something they don't know about? Let me explain state capture to you very quickly. For every one rent spent in this country, 50 cents come from the state. So if you want to see who has captured the state, you must go and look for all those 50 cents, who've got them, and the rents. The state has been captured by two families, mostly Rupert and the Oppenheimers, yeah. and bosses. Let me explain. Yes, the Guptas. I once, when I was young, I was very naughty. I broke into a house with a friend of mine. He went to the fridge to steal the cheese. I went to the safe. So the Guptas basically went to the fridge. They stole the, the cheese. I am the Oppenheimers. I went to the safe in the room upstairs. So the Guptas. So we must not come here and talk about petty thieves. Let's talk about PHP bulletin. One example of state, I'll make you two examples of state capture. We, we come into BHT bulletin in our, in our next segment, but I want you to uh, complete the point yes. that you're making here. I want to talk about BHP bulletin. BHP bulletin is paying 17 cent per kilowatt hour for electricity. Everybody here pays 10 times more than BHP bulletin. Yes. Their contract comes from apartheid to 2020. They've now told some government members no, they've got a supplement contract that runs until 2028. That's the first state capture. The second state capture is Budvest. Everything in this country is being done by Budvest. Ramaphosa has captured the state. So we must not come here and talk about petty criminals. The good are small fry. Let us talk about the real white criminals. Thank you very much. Gaten. Gaten. Gaten shouldn't. Temba, you want to respond? Shouldn't we talk about all... We, we will be making a big mistake as a nation. If we're saying because other criminals stole money, therefore the new criminals must be allowed to steal. I it is a... It is a it is, can I... Can I... Can I finish the point? You have made the point. You have made the point. Let him finish. I'm saying to you, yes. Under apartheid, a lot of the big companies stole money, well, stole money, made money out of the resources of this country, right? No argument there. It does not mean that when people today, you and I, start stealing money from the state coffers, it makes it right. It's wrong. We got to make sure that the public resources that are available there, but I am saying that when we are talking about state capture and corruption, Let's deal with it irrespective of who's doing it. Do you Let's accept, do you, hold on, Gaten. Yes. as a businessman yourself, yes. and you've spoken quite openly and proudly about your wealth, that you didn't steal it, you work hard for it, having spent years in prison, I, I grant you that. Do you accept that there is a point at which people who are wealthy must step back and think about the issues that uh, uh, Mark Haywood Absolutely. raised here? Yeah? No doubt about it. People who are, do you consider yourself politically, con sorry, I didn't give you a microphone. Do you Absolutely. consider yourself politically connected? Should you be doing deals with the state? I have no tender with the state. State. I got no deal with the South African state. My issue is I'm very poor in comparison to my white peers. The question I would like to ask Mr. Maseko, mm. he said the Guptas asked him to spend some of his money, some of the, of some of the budget he has. 
Yeah. All of it. Now I'm asking you, who are you spending it on? Because I know I'm going to tell you if you're not being honest. Well, let's understand. Who gets your budget? Who gets your budget? Multi choice. Get your budget. Multi choice. Get your budget. Temba, you need to answer. You need to answer that. Hold on, everybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Is state capture? We'll give everybody a chance. Everybody's raising their hands now. We're going to get to you in just a moment. Yes. Is state capture with us to stay, or are we about to flush it down the drain? It doesn't look like it from what we are seeing. You're watching the big debate. We'll carry on with our discussion in a moment. Welcome back to the big debate on state capture with me, Ridi Kabi, on SABC2 and SAFM. Now, after today, today's show, we will be here in the studio for another hour. If you want to continue watching, go to our Facebook page or to the SABC News YouTube channel. We'll be taking your inputs from home and uh, we're going to hear final word from our studio audience. And I must just say that we did invite the ruling party, the African National Congress. In the beginning of our negotiation, it looked like they were coming to join us, uh, but ultimately nobody was available to talk about state capture. If anyone has seen them, please send me a tweet. We'd like to have them here. <laughs> Let's hear from uh, a business leader in South Africa, Danisa Baloyi. Um, Can you put the, the, the microphone? Thank close. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think um, uh, the problem I'm grappling with with tonight's show is that I think it's not very balanced. Um, it should have been a little bit more balanced. So let me make that In disclaimer. what way? Can you elaborate? No, I just think even from your intro, um, you were a little biased. You should, at, if you want to talk about state capture, talk about it from all angles. And I've seen that when you argue with the presenters, um, your view is one way. So. Uh, that's my, my first with, point. With but let's go to the I point. I haven't given a view. And in our yes. insight, we gave the historic role of the mining sector. We brought Henny here precisely because he's analyzed the looting by the apartheid state. But anyway, we can continue and, this and conversation another time. And I agree. I, agree. Time, yeah? I, I think Floyd at least c came with a balance. Mm. When he spoke about both historical and current. And if we see elements of that, they are both bad. Which the is problem, what has been said repeatedly, yeah? yeah? Ready, please. The you are problem, making an accusation, so I'm yes, trying to set it the, right. Yeah? yeah, the problem with the debate and the narrative in South Africa today is that we tend to highlight one aspect of it and not all of it. If something is bad and it's chronic within our society, let's deal with it in all its aspects. What do you think should happen? I really think the debate should be opened up it should be opened up. We should have, hold no prisoners. If it is the current, as Masako said, is the current milieu that is a problem, let's talk about it. But not one way. Let us not, let us not shield business. And I come from business. Let us not shield business like we tend to do. Uh, state capture, we want to say, because it's the state, it's just government that is problematic, yet we, we rarely want to talk about problems coming out of business but because most of us are employed by business ready. All right. Uh, I think we have dealt with the mining, uh, the history of no, mining, the Oppenheimers and mining. so on. No, no, no. Obviously, that is a microcosm of what is happening in South Africa. But okay, we hear you. We'll continue that in the second segment. Let's just give other people a chance. Uh, Dennis George from Fedusa, thank you very much. You look, can ask look, your question. Look, I think it's oh, by thing. the way, sorry, I must say that we invited the president, we invited the Guptas, we invited Brian Mulefe, so, so that they can also uh, contribute to the this narrative they didn't take up the invitation so sometimes when people are not here it's not because they don't want we don't want to hear them but for some reason they don't want to participate in the debate yeah. Look, I think we must just prosecute all the thieves all the business people that stolen the old people the new people look at our young people four million of them can't find jobs because these people want to make more profits at the back of that and that is very important but i think we must prosecute them and i think without her we can also do private prosecution my concern is <laughs> yeah. as a member of the anc <laughs> ex-member of the anc it is the state at that time during the big years even 
that refused to go after some of the companies that benefited from apartheid. That is the truth. It is them that frustrated these prosecutions that should have happened. So where does the blame lie? And the next question is, when do we move from debate? We're hearing the hearings in ESCOM. Those are not anonymous sources. We've got the former chairperson of ESCOM himself saying that there was an attempt to capture. We have uh, Brian Malifa conceding that there was something problematic about this infamous uh, 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 contract. We had just, was it just two days ago when Minister Ibrahim Patel said they're taking Oak Bay to court unless it pays the 263 million. So what I'm saying is we're beyond the realm of rumor and conjecture. There is palpable evidence and it points to certain people. Is that not so? That's why you need a prosecutor and police to look into this. So you say that the reason they're not being prosecuted is not because there's no evidence, because the institutions are weak. The institutions from the very top are captured. You know, you know, like part of the whole state capture phenomenon that is expressed through the Zupta-led criminal syndicate was to weaken the NPA, right? But we must constantly dismiss the capitalist logic, the capitalist gangster logic that is uh, being said by Gaten that if these ones have stolen, you must close an eye on these other ones who are stealing now. We must attend to them equally. All of them, we must take decisive action on all the capitalist criminals. We must not choose that this one has done this. All of them are wrong. But the money that Guptas are stealing is not small money. It's billions of rands that have been shifted out of this country to Dubai. There's evidence there. The Reserve Bank has brought that to the attention of the prosecuting authority, but they're not doing anything because they're captured as well. It's a reality that we must deal with. We must not faking. underestimate We're going to hear from you in the aspects. next segment. In the next segment, we're going to hear from you. After the break, the last word from our panel. We'll see you just now. Welcome back to the big debate. We're looking for solutions to uh, state capture. Now, my panel, this is your last chance to really reach out to the people of South Africa and to our leaders. What is your message? And very quickly, we're going to squeeze some comments from community leaders. But let's give him Zwanele Man. You haven't spoken since we started. Go yeah. ahead. No, I think, I think we're misleading the public. We're misleading the public because we've narrowed the state capture into either government, business, or guptas. State capture is important to say, what is the state? Is the judiciary is part of it? Parliament is part Don't of it, laugh, government Don't is part laughing. of it. Wait, no, naughty corner for you. Let him it, finish. Therefore, therefore, when we deal when we deal with the state capture, we must deal with all the elements of the state. You've got 20 seconds. How much, how much, how, how much is judiciary, in fact, judiciary uh, has actually managed it better because we also have an appeal, because we could have a situation where judges at the high court could be biased. And, and by the way, there's case law uh, around that. Sometimes you can even ex ask them to recuse themselves or whatever, but the issue, is that you have a, a, a bias uh, sometimes uh, even at the judiciary level you also have parliament that can be captured why why is it that you have a parliament that when uh, okay Musi parliament and judiciary is captured your 40 seconds is up i'm, I'm sorry saying Ziki, sir. i'm saying they can be captured Ziki, sir. okay so i think um a part of the problem is that dishonesty not even the dishonesty but we have an inconsistent politics in terms of the people who are taking up political positions so when fred is saying that how we overcome state capture for example is uh, um, i'm taking back the land he must clarify us if we're taking some of the land or unoccupied land or whatever is happening right because part of the problem also is that when we organize when we go back into our communities and we organize them we're not we are misinforming the people that we are supposed to lead and we are allowing the propaganda machine in this country to run wild we need to understand that the ruling government is not necessarily the ruling class in this country and we cannot 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 ever separate what the noble sun location is saying around state capture going back to the original sin which Time is dispossession up, lucky. Well, for me, I don't well for me i want to say two things firstly i do not understand why something criminal we want to call it state capture south africa has passed a piece of legislation prevention and combat of corrupt corrupt activities act of 2004. now if people have committed a crime apply that act that's the first issue secondly i agree with floyd that the guptas have done uh, wrong things and we can't ignore that but I also think that this country faces a massive socio-economic crisis, which dates back to seconds. the time when mines 
particular discovery of gold and diamond started. Now, that's what we need to be dealing with. And we can't put the Guptas as the primary strategic issue that is facing the country No, uh, Gaten. No, you're not getting more time. Henny, you've given up your closing argument to this gentleman. Tell us where you come from, a mining community, quickly. Okay, my name is Mishak Mbangula from um, Makua, Mining Africa. Um, we as communities are only uh, gaining all. We were left with the legend of recession and junk status. And we've been living on this junk status for a long time. And now what is happening, we are, as South Africa, we are sort of in an uh, automatic pilot, which is, there's no, it doesn't have a direction where it's going. And leave us with nothing but suffering. So what we are saying is we need a revolution. We don't need, because this is, we believe this is a, a, a sort of a coup, a silent okay. coup. Quickly, the last we, seconds to you. We're debating as if there's no victims. We forget that the victims in this room is silent. There are school children not getting school books. There are people dying in hospitals. There is a, is a demanding process. 134 people died because of corruption, and we shouldn't forget about that. Outer is in courts to make sure that this is stopped. Your 40 seconds. Your 40 seconds. There's 7.5 million people aged 15 to 35 who are not in school, they're not in training, and they're not in employment. They're doing nothing and going absolutely nowhere. That is criminal. There are people we have elected under our democratic constitution and we trusted them to govern this country in the interests of everybody, especially the poor. And that is not happening. Many people are looting and helping the private sector and themselves to get incredibly rich at the expense of all the Time victims Floyd, that you're talking Temba about. Temba hasn't had his chance. Very quickly, uh, Floyd. Quick, quickly, Reddy, I'm laughing because uh, Jimmy is using the semi-literate Zuma's Zwane. narrative exactly. of a uh, rebuttal of state capture, and that is laughable. I mean, it's so sad. Now, the permanent solution to state capture in South Africa will come with the absolute defeat of the ANC. The ANC must be removed from political power. The people of South Africa must take charge of their own country take back the land, take back, back the mines, let's take back the banks and deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. Thank you. Closing argument. Closing argument. Quickly. All right. Fakey, quickly. Fakey, Fakey, Fakey's closing argument. Fakey, quickly. Quick, quick. From yesterday and today, Fish, S&P, Moodley downgraded us. Billions have been siphoned out of South Africa, both at the touch of the button and physically through money bags. Ten exactly. seconds. No, 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 please. My last second. We are rolling the 2019 we'll down now. vote the ANC out of power. He said that. Yeah. Quickly, Temba, quickly. My, men, my message to everyone sitting around this room, hold your leaders accountable. Thank you. Hold your leaders accountable. That's where we'll end it with Temba Maseko. State capture has damaged our democracy. Ministers and CEOs have lost their jobs and we have lost money and trust. It started hundreds of years ago, but it recently, it went crazy. Can we put an end to the rot? Do we have leaders we can trust to lead us out of this mess? You decide. Thank you for watching The Big Debate. Thank you very much. And stay with us right now on Facebook Live and SABC YouTube. See you next week. Well, we did tell you at the start of the big debate that we've got a second segment or perhaps a continuation of our debate. It's part, it's some sort of workshop which is streaming live on SABC, YouTube and Facebook. You can continue to tweet us and participate in our conversation. And for our audience members and panelists and everybody else who feel, who feel that they didn't have a say, there are people watching you right now and we can capture the comments and, uh, you know, the, the, the narrative that you wanted to speak. But to help me along in this segment, we we have Professor William Gumede, and he's going to come forward uh, to, to tell us what happens next. Thank you, Reddy. Uh, thank you, audience. <laughs> what we're going to do, <laughs> you know, in this part of the, what we'll, you, you, we'll give, uh, we'll allow the community also to engage in this part uh, of the session. I mean, we will still engage with the panelists. Some of the panelists may leave. Uh, and someone who wants to leave. I mean, of course, we would really want everyone to be, to, you know, to stay along. Uh, so we, we, what I'm going to try to do is really to try to get as many people to speak. And then just the same rules apply. 
uh, please, when you speak, one comment or one question in order to allow everyone else to speak. I'm teach you know, I'm a teacher, so anyone who goes over it, I will send you out. <laughs> I won't do it as in Parliament where they carry you out with security. <laughs> we won't do that uh, and so on. So just be disciplined. So I don't know, ready now, what we'll do is there going to be a, a, a lull so that those who want to go can go? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they'll indicate to us if they want to go. I mean, we've got <coughs> investigative journalists who are the people who are where we're researching and have come with the information that we're all discussing. So we're going to give you a chance to speak. And I'm particularly interested, uh, William, in getting a response uh, to the issue that was raised by somebody who comes from the community and was affected because it's very important that we go beyond the theory and we look at the people who are affected by inequality, by poverty, by corruption and by weak institutions as raised by Anne. Okay. All right. So um, everyone is going to stay here. I'm very happy with that. So let me start. I mean, what I'll do is I'll just, su I, I think I'll summarize just in a minute, 30 seconds. Or perhaps we can start with giving people who didn't get a chance to give their Absolutely. closing argument. I think, um, Temba Maseko, we gave you about five seconds. And Feiki, I interrupted your closing argument uh, as well. I think you had, uh, the two of you had 20 seconds to share. Carry on say, making the point you wanted okay. to make, uh, Temba. Well, thank you. So you're getting an extra chance now. Yeah. 30 seconds. He had six. He had six seconds. I was basically arguing that all of us need to hold our leaders accountable. Because when people get into power, irrespective of what political party they're in, they tend to be close to their friends who are in business. They end up giving business to their friends. And that's where corruption or capture happens. So hold your leaders accountable, all of them. Okay. That's the point I, I wanted to I, make. I was interested in, in hearing that um, a, a, a gate, and I'll give you a I'm not asking you the question. I'm just summarizing something that you said and asking someone else to respond, and then you'll come in later. Talking about the extent of state capture, you basically were quantifying it, saying that the Guptas have taken uh, to cheese, right? Taking cheese. Uh, when you compare it, yeah, the, the whites have the jewelry and the Guptas have taken cheese. I mean, is that something that, that persuades you that this is, he didn't say insignificant, but he's saying on the bigger scheme of things, uh, it's not you know in the era in which we thought we have been unshackled ourselves from the very misdemeanors of apartheid injustice exploitation we enter an era where we vote a party into power hoping that the lives of ordinary people like these communities would get better. 23 years down the line, you may kill me if you want to. Their lives are actually worse. The last time we were downgraded, the way we were yesterday and today was under apartheid. We had hoped that our government elected by the people for the people would make sure that that would be a thing of the past. When I counted six months ago, 350 billion had been unaccounted for. That's the cheese, for. right? That, that's actually the, the jewelry. <laughs> that's the jewelry. 350 billion were unaccounted for right through the government sector. Only monies that, have should, that should have built hospitals, that have, should have looked after the SED many people. For the first time since apartheid, Money that were never touched, 350 million that were never touched for disaster management. The Treasury decided to take them. As a result, there were floods in KZN. There were no proper warnings. 11 people died. There is a, our water situation right now is in a very bad situation. There is no money to do anything about that because where is our money? It has gone between business people and government. Is it that, I mean, just, I really do want us to give uh, community people a hearing here. I'm getting a sense uh, from what Feiki is saying and what you are saying that people are taken aback by state capture in a post-democratic era because that's not what you expected. With the apartheid looters, you ex I mean, you should read Henny Van Furen's book because it, from page one, you hear about an apartheid era president in giving an instruction that the shredders must go off, meaning the evidence, right, of, 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 of state capture. Right now, 
do you care how much money has been wasted? Does it help us to quantify it? Do we have a sense? And is that material to the conversation so, around so, state so capture? I just, I just come in. I mean, it, just, you just have to think about this. And now I'm here talking from an academic point of view. Um, if we, when we talk about white monopoly capital, now if every year in the, our state alone, 300 billion rand in the state goes away. To okay. someone or some people. Now, business. if you calculate, let's just say, if you calculate from 1994, and we calculate until now, every year, it is that one amount. Now, if you then put another amount of money just wasted, so, you know, the money is not, it's just wasted, nobody cares. It's, it's just wasted. We can add another 300 billion rand. Huh? Now, what it then means, it, it just, it, it means it is very, is very significant. So even if we put aside white, white monopoly capital and we say, it, let's put it aside, let's use, use the money just in the states. So if we just use the money in the state, we can make a, a, a very big difference. But maybe what I'll do is let's get to the community and let's make, you know, to make, for people to make uh, 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 contributions. Before I get to your money, so let me get, do you understand that? Is there a mic for you? We yeah, to move microphone. up the mic. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Oh, there, there's the one. Yeah, yeah. We need that as yeah, a moderator. Yeah. Where's the yellow microphone? Somebody has captured my yellow microphone. And, there it is. Yeah. And, 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 and if you talk... Uh, no, no, there's going to be a question, but remember we now, you, you know, we are moderators here. Yeah? Right. You, we you know, ask the questions. We, yeah, we come to you. you yeah. I'll make sure yeah, you yeah. get... I, I, I think... Uh, thank you for, for giving chance to speak, because... When I'm sitting here, I, I was amazed at why I'm here, because we were not given chance to raise our issues as community, as poor community living from rural areas. Now, the burden is that we are listening to people who are in the cheese. We are out of the cheese. We are not even <laughs> close to the cheese. We are, we, are, we are told about people who are in the cheese, not us. It's, that cheese does not refer to us. We are in a poverty Actually, we are the third, we are the fifth Give him a chance. citizens. Let us, let's hear you. We are the fifth citizens in South Africa, rural people on, in South Africa, because we are not taken serious, we are not careful. There's nothing that happens. Now it is disappointing to see the same government that we thought is legitimate being compar comparison to, to the apartheid government and say it's 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 a, it's a looting of apartheid and the Indian new government. It's a disgusting. For us, it's the disgusting that our trust we gave to this government, and they are looting on behalf of us. And we say <laughs> it's an apartheid. We must compare it with apartheid issues. I think we are, we are at the wrong. There's something wrong with our minds and something wrong with our moral. Okay. I can't listen to this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be talking on land, and I'm a victim, Jimmy Shebakam, uh, of white monopoly capital. In the apartheid era, I was working and I was okay. And when government uh, came into place, this there was government. Commonwealth okay. money, 200 million US dollars which was put on my head. And my husband died for that. <coughs> a Nigerian and a, 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 a councillor from Dobsonville. I hope all of you know that case where a Nigerian was bullying the magistrate, bullying the, the, the prosecutor, bullying myself. And why I'm, so, I'm saying Jim, uh, 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 my, my, my name must look this side is I was using my father's place a security that I can prove, improve other people's lives. That money was given to, to Ntatembeki that we can change Alexander. I did the Alexander renewal and the Pankop place. And right now as we speak, the Nigerian doesn't get arrested. And this is how my leg becomes when I go to the public protector. I want to be sure that we understand you uh, correctly. I can hear the, the, the emotion and the hurt and the trauma. Am I understanding correctly that you, you were supposed to receive repatriation? Re, re, what's the word? The English? Reparation. Uh, reparation, I, I was, I I was supposed, reparation money yes. for land that you lost. Yes. Restitution. No. Right? Yeah, it, was, it was business. We built three shopping centers in Soweto with Colias RMS. 
which was controlled by, by Fetcho. Then it got controlled by Investec. Because my husband died on duty, he was killed by two colleagues, the, 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 the ones who, who planned his death. I was supposed to be earning a, a something from Koeda. There is so much corruption in the Labor Department. And I'm, say, I'm putting my head on a block, challenging Dr. Uh, Cyril uh, Ramaphos. I gave him everything. And I got hurt after giving him this. Mm -hmm. I was hurt by the securities and the public the protector. It, it was reparations. Reparations, that's what I understand. Yeah. Reparations. Uh, uh, Temba, I want, you, I want you to speak to this. I mean, what, what is coming out here are broken people and history that the neglect of these communities started way back, not just with dispossession during apartheid, but the promise of a democracy did not do for you what you wanted to do, right? Did I get you correctly? I think we've let our people down because when we won our freedom, we went into government with okay, a clear can, understanding that our job in government, and I'm not speaking of, of government here, I'm saying we understood our job as being to improve the lives of ordinary people. But as soon as people get into power, power gets into their heads and people start thinking about personal interest. Now, if we were a pure people's government, the needs and requirements of people would have been uppermost in our heads. We'd have forgotten about doing deals with business people, whether they call themselves the new business people or the old ones and make sure that the taxes that we are collecting every single day benefit ordinary people. And that's why it becomes very important for us to say, we're gonna hold our leaders accountable from now onwards. Whether they are EFF, ANC, DA, or whatever. When somebody gets elected into positions of power, what they must do first before anything else is to say, what am I gonna do each and every single day to improve the lives of ordinary people? Our problem in this country is that we tend to have uh, what is called personality cults. If we believe in somebody, we think they can't do wrong. The lesson of the past 20 years is saying to me, everybody is capable of doing wrong things, and let's hold everybody, however much we like them today, let's hold them accountable. When we put that X and say, we are putting you there to make sure that you put the interests of our people first we would not have these kinds of problems. You know, it's, it just also seems our minds are also captured. I mean, if people are saying, you, you know, business has been captured, the state, but also our minds are, are captured, what do we do? I'm going to bring it, you know, to another community leader. Uh, my case dates back to the apartheid era. This hand you see here, I was injured. Ten limbless men walked in 1981, uh, were fired. Uh, I used to work for the South, then South African Railways and Harbors. Ten limbless men ran down by rail coaches while on duty. He walked to the offices of uh, the advocate. He was an, a, an attorney by then, prior to him being an advocate. He, uh, Ishmael Ayub, he was a downtown uh, uh, Bree Street. Uh, um, our, our representatives was Bishop Desmond Tutu, Ishmael Ayub, and the late Shina Duncan. Uh, I was the only one fortunate uh, guy because I used to stay in the township. The nine all other people who used to stay in the, in the, the then TBVC states, if you remember, t t this guy. Those people were fired with no scent, with a person with both legs out and a leg or a, nine of them. They are known in the, in, the, in the offices of the Transnet, which is now Transnet. As of now, I, I was fired in 1981. For 36 years, I've been out of work. I was injured in 1977. I worked four years after my injury, and then in 1981, a word came out from the general manager of the uh, then South African Railways, saying, all the, I'll mention it in Africans, all the kafirs, what Pasiertas and Tins, and Muton, Medlek Afghan, what that does that. He was saying those words to Ishmael Ayub when he was yet an attorney. He, he, he closed the, the shut the phone onto him. He didn't say anything. That was that. Then the poor people, they just left uh, because they used to stay in, in the compounds. So I was the only one because I used to stay in the township. I was fortunate for that. So nothing up until now. I'm with this Kulumani support group for the reparations of, of, of apartheid uh, victims. That is that nothing has happened. So do something. So clearly, you know, just in terms of, <laughs> you know, in terms of reparations. So the money lost, what we could have used the money for reparations. Do you want to speak? 
Sun Bonani, meaning is Okuluma and over the scene on his cone. Nizonia Kela, Manin Kela, getting red, Nizella and Suga, a metal peck, and Pumalang. Nizang is Okela Ningrete, Ninga Pansque Main, the Main Le, Ishandua, Isabel Zana, the Main Le, the Main Le, I say, and a Pansque, and now we are a wheat bank. The Main Lena in Tirizele, young Tirizela, and a Kala, Yahamba. Ya wisa ma festere ya wisa yonki nto ya hamba nga lungisa ibu ile manje leso skati be inkipa nga kina nkala ngita nsa funu puma ngubo muza miya pele ibu ile manje le maini itubula isa nkipi manje ngoba yangbona kuta ngufunu puma itubula ngula pengini kukale wanku nto ngisa ngbambelele nge nga matafula Ingenge litubula ngakhona akekho ncedzako uyilele kuthe kuthal kume kuloka nje yethu azange bancede kwaba ne parliament lapha ngaye parliament ngasibika leso sikhalo sami i parliament babuye ne spray bathi bazonceda sodi namuhla akekho ncedza kwangazi kusa nemvuthu I would like several people abasebenzi kiyo le mayi abafuna ubacala there there are several people who i think who i think should should respond to this uh, Henny, it, it reminds me of a theme that you address in your book. He men she's mentioning Shanduka Mine, owned by Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa. I know in your book you also talk about the history of Lonmin and how that uh, a company and the, the, those who founded it didn't do nadering to the apartheid state but attached themselves to the new elites. Now, here's the result forget, for, uh, forgotten and neglected people, people treated like they just don't exist. That is the reality. And she wants to know what can be done about it because the mining houses, Sanduga in particular, are going in and ignoring people. If, if Floyd, just, you, you know, like uh, outside of the rhetoric and all of these things that of debating concepts and everything. So, the last time we participated. Uh, in the big debate was here in the studios. There was a young man who was sitting in the corner there on a wheelchair and then he raised these concerns and we made a commitment then that we're going to make follow up on that issue. And we made follow up on him, got him the electronic wheelchair, got him to school and did everything else that he had raised in this platform. So I don't want to do into theoretical rhetoric in terms of what we can do. We are here with the chairperson of Johannesburg, of the EFF. Of all the people who came from communities that are raising genuine issues that affect them personally, we can take that up as the EFF, and not for votes purposes. We can take that up, all of those issues, because we've got a paralegal office here in 78, the Quarter Street, which is our head office, where people come for free. We offer legal advice and intervene more specifically on cases that affect people. And that is not an electioneering intervention. It's one of the things that we do. So I, I would plead that with those that have got the case of Mama there, the case of uh, Baba here and everyone else there, we can make concrete interventions, make follow up with the relevant authorities. We have got access at least to parliaments and at all levels to the municipality here in Johannesburg. We can make follow up in areas where we can uh, uh, intervene and if it, it requires lawyers we always have got lawyers on standby who can make interventions on and, all of those if, issues if the ANC, so it must not just DA, be a talk for nothing sure it must be concrete interventions that we can make if on the anc issues. da you take up the challenge these are your these are South Africans, uh, you can take that up. But Mark, I do want to come to you on that because I, I see Kulumani is also here as well. Uh, you, you were on a cycle tour meeting ordinary South Africans, you were busy with the, the textbook saga and talk basically the material cost of neglect when the state retreats and these are the people who are not being heard. Is that what's happening? What can we do about yeah, it? Because we have a massive problem in our country. We have a fantastic constitution uh, we need a microphone. We need a mic. Sorry, can we? Okay. We have a great constitution hey, which gives power up. to ordinary people, and you can see that power, for example, in the struggle that we had over antiretroviral treatment. We fought for antiretroviral treatment against the resistance of Tabo and Becky and the ANC. Today, we have four million people on antiretroviral treatment because we fought for our rights. But the problem is, although we have a good constitution. Very few poor people have access to legal services and access to lawyers. So one of the discussions that we should be having 
is how do we get civil society organizations like my organization, Section 27, other organizations, to work together and to work together with what Floyd has just said, with political parties like the EFF, to make sure that wherever there's an injustice, we don't postpone that injustice to 10 years time or five years time or three years time. We say, let's deal with that injustice now and let's remedy the injustice now. Let me say one last thing, Ridi. You know, the life esedimeni issue, where we now know 143 people died. The full story of life esedimeni must still come out, but it had to do with corruption. But that life esedimeni arbitration would not be taking place if it wasn't for civil society organizations that made partnerships with the families of the people who died and said, let us represent you to make sure that we find justice. So we have to seek justice now. Skonati, Skonati hasn't spoken. I know maybe, you've, you've... Yeah, maybe if I can, if oh, I come okay. in, I mean, if, if, oh, if you okay. can be, I mean, you know, this is one of our journalists here who's been uh, talking about the costs of corruption. I mean, if you can just quickly give us just, I mean, if, if, if the costs of corruption. Before I give you the cost of corruption, uh, Floyd Chibam talks about accountability. He must start by accounting for the death of the MPA that he lamented earlier and said, the reason there's no prosecutions now, it's because the NPA has been weakened. He should first stand up and apologize to the people of South Africa. Him and the ANC Youth League at the time, together led by Comrade Julius Malema. We'll give, they, we'll give, we'll give they, Freud a chance to apologize. They, 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 huh? they, they stood up and said, they stood up and said they would, the, 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 the NPA needed to die and they would kill for Jacob Zuma. And what did die was the National Prosecuting Authority. Today it's coming to bite all of us, including himself as the South Africans we are. We killed the law enforcement agencies in this country. And Floyd Shibambu and the leaders, leadership of the ANC Youth League and the ANC at the time must account for that. Whatever political party they are in today, we need to acknowledge the past before we can know where we are going. Now, we'll give uh, you a Mark to say sorry. I see you're dying to say sorry. <laughs> Mark. Oh. <laughs> now, Mark Haywood spoke about about uh, about Michael Komapi. Mike Haywood spoke about Michael P Komapi who died uh, in in, in Limpopo, the five-year-old boy, and and the the education department had been looking for money to, to be able to build the toilets, the infrastructure. Now, two billion rand, as he pointed out, was wasted, they're stolen by people who say it's our turn to eat now, we'll see with Why the Guptas at the it table. Vanille? He says it's our turn to eat. <laughs> no, Jimmy no. said it. No, 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 no. I have to respond. Let him he, he has to respond and defend himself. Uh, okay, finish your point and then uh, we have to give him a chance. I, I, I will. At the very, at the okay. very beginning of the show, at the very, at the very start of the show, Mr. Mani said, we are sitting at the table with the Guptas because we have disrupted this. Now, allow me to move on. Allow me to move on. Okay. The he two said billion that rand, white the monopoly capital has been at the at, at the table, and, and that the we have joined them at the table to yeah, eat. The Guptas have joined them. I didn't say the, that. The two, let's move on. The two billion okay, rand. Okay, let's give him. A, the two. Oh, no, wait, 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 Katie. The you two don't have billion a rand hear that. You anyway. The two billion rand that has been stolen. Of course. The two billion rand that was stolen uh, from the education department when Michael Komapi died, and the uh, department could not provide schools, that could have built. 20,000 RTP houses at a cost of 100,000 rands each. These are the houses, I'm, not, I'm talking about the more expensive one, with, uh, with tiles on, on, on the roof, not Amazink. 100,000 rands per house. I'm talking about proper houses. Lucky Muntana here ch uh, was chairman of, was chief executive of uh, Prasa. During, between 2012 and 2015, the national treasury said, Four billion rand of, of, of South Africans' money was lost from that department. And it said, from that company, and the National Treasury said on the 21st of June this year, that four billion rand, that is still not being accounted for. The chairman of, of, of Prasa at the time, who was Lucky Montana's boss, uh, is one of he is today chairman of the Public Investment Corporation, must be prosecuted 
for, for the corruption that happened there, Lucky was leading that company. Mm -hmm. Now, the four billion rand that was lost there, unaccounted for, could have built 40,000 RTP houses at 100,000 rands each. Lastly, Lucky Montana here spoke, spoke about in, uh, accountability. The National Treasury, which is under the leadership of Malusi Kigaba and uh, Sviso Butelezi, audited 216 contracts done during Lucky Montana's tenure. <laughs> Only 13 of them were above board. The rest lost us 4 billion rand, which could have built, I repeat, 40,000 RTP houses and enough schools and infrastructure. Lucky Montana today is talk talks about accountability. Of course, he's not going to prosecute himself because Floyd helped kill the NPA. <laughs> Everybody, we've got, there, there's got to be an order. The no, 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 Gaten, wait. The first accusation, no, no, let's be fair. The first accusation was to Floyd. The second one was to you. And the last one was to you. So, so, so what say if... That, that's right. You know, uh, you're a respected journalist and you, you have just uh, uh, humiliated yourself by spectacularly they uh, misrepresenting you, so. reality. Because we never said, even when on the ANC, we clicked that the NPA must die. You, I, I give a challenge today that you go retrieve a report or a record somewhere that says that no, 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 the Fred, EFF we said or the ANC said. Hold on, no, 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 so that, what, what is that saying no, 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 now wait, is Floyd, absolutely I'm gonna challenge nonsense. You. I'm gonna challenge so his memory is spectacularly failing him. Oh, oh, wait, Floyd. You may not have said it, yeah. but you supported no, moves no, to weaken it. What, what, you what may we not did, have said it, yeah, but you supported it. moves. What we did, what we did when we formed the EFF, what we did publicly when we launched the EFF in Marikan, we apologized to the people of South Africa for bringing a disaster called Jacob Zuma. Okay. Okay. And we have apologized. That one has been and dealt with. And everything that came with and him, was that yes, the weakening of the NPA? That, everything the else that the represented. Of the NPA. But we never Including demanded the for the death of the NPA. Of the NPA. Well, well, we maybe never not in words, that. but in your actions. Okay, yes. Mzwanele must, must, so must have at least proper record. <laughs> yeah. Your memory must you, not fail you. You are a real politician. Yeah, I think your memory must not fail you. Mzwanele, there was an accusation made where you I must think two points. Firstly, I think I'm really disappointed by Skonati. You see, Skonati represents, smiling, he doesn't represents, care. The, re, represents <laughs> white monopoly capital media. This is what they do. What we're sitting with here today, we're sitting with 60 billion rand that has been in illicit financial outflows yes. that Skonati does not write about. Mm. This is a 60 billion rand that has been stolen by white monopoly capital. It's reported by SARS, but no one does anything about it and doesn't write about it. The reason government does not always have enough money is because of tax evasion and everything else by white monopoly capital. Now, when it comes to the issues of what? Sorry? eating, when it when it comes to the the issue of the Guptas, I'm 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 saying to, as we sit here and now, this is a very interesting point. As we sit here and now, I'm in court over a tweet. Now, I'm saying to people. If the Guptas have done what people say they've, they've done, I'm not defending them. Why don't we just take them to the court? Why don't we have them prosecuted? It is. Do that. I'm in, I'm, I'm in court. I'm in court. I'm in court over a tweet. I'm in court over a tweet. Why don't we take the Guptas to court for the people are accusing them of? of corruption yeah, against the Guptas take them everywhere. Everywhere. People have done that. People no, they have not. They have never been to court over that. We the case in the Johannesburg police station there, court. and the Guptas were not arrested. Court. Who opened the case in Roseburg police station? Take them the to Guptas were not arrested. But Bring evidence. No, no. I think this is the issue. Hold on. Let this, this is the issue. This is the issue. This is how the law works in this country. To go around reporting, is not enough. What you must do when you report, you must bring evidence, the evidence that leads, that well. the evidence that leads that to prosecution. Well. That's what you must do. Can I ask you one question? Let, hold on, let's ask Mzarello one question. Do you regard, do, I mean, to be factual, matters have been reported to the police. Yes, that's what, hold on, hold on. You're, he's evidence. making an important point about yeah. the fact that the matters haven't reached court, but there could be a number of reasons for that, the weakening of the institutions, NP and what. What I want to ask you is, what is coming out of Parliament, not from journalists, but from ESCOM itself, ESCOM executives themselves, the fall of Bell Pottinger, SAP, McKinsey and all that, do you regard that as evidence? Is that something that concerns you at all, the stuff that is coming out from ESCOM executives Ryan themselves? Ryan made a very important point in that, in, that, in that Parliament. He said 
that is scratching the surface. If you want to get to the depth of this thing, get to all the white monopoly capital companies that are eating you. Lucky, the third, the third Gaten, the third accusation was to Lucky, let him... Well, yeah. I, and then Zugisa hasn't spoken as well. Uh, well, William, I, would you I, I wish I would have spoken before he made this intervention because I wanted to raise a number of things uh, before that accusation because and I don't think that I want to deal with that. Firstly, let me, let me assure uh, the comrades uh, from who work for the South African Railway and Habas uh, because one of the things that happened in the democratic state um, in 2001, you remember that black workers were not covered, were not even getting pensions. The state was not making a contribution for these workers, uh, only white workers. But that was corrected by, by legislation, which means workers like you, including those in the, in the TBV, former TBV states, should have their money. And I think, I think what Floyd said is commendable. And I think that uh, uh, I would assist even the EFF to get some of the information about how best that you, you get that. So that is one part. The second issue that I want to deal with, you know, Tamba makes an important point, but we need to be very careful. The, the big debate must enable us to have a informed, rational debate and discussions. We must examine issues. I mean, let me take two issues. And for the journalist, I think that uh, he hasn't even looked at the facts. The first fact is that it was said Prasa didn't lose four billion rands. It was said Prasa had 14 billion rand of irregular expenditure. But you know, and Mark has repeated the same point, that there's 200 million rand stolen because the easy way to use is looting and stealing. Okay? Now let me, let me clarify it uh, briefly so that we can deal with the issue. There are people who are stealing and who should be arrested. I think uh, uh, Dennis made that very good point. But not every amount of of, of irregular expenditure means that money has been stolen. For example, let's deal with health, Mark, where you are. A CEO in a hospital buys hospital, uh, medic medication. That medication is given to people, served to them. Eight months down the line, an auditor comes to, to the hospital and says, yes, medication has been bought for 200 million. It has been served to people. But it says, CEO, when you bought that medication, you, you are meant to follow five steps. You followed one, two, you jumped three, you jumped four, and you did five. Okay? What should happen? And in South Africa, then they write, CEO stole 200 million rands. And all of us, we fight about that. Whereas the real thing is that there's a mechanism to deal with that. Now, I think, I think what we should be doing is that, and I think you must go and look, the, if, if you are a real journalist, you, you would say that, you would say that Lucky Montana actually wrote a 20-page letter to Parliament asking for a same inquiry on press in the same way to actually prove that, um, that not only is 12 billion of the 14 billion rent irregular actually very wrong, okay? It was a proxy to fight a particular battle. The Speaker of Parliament never responded and never instituted Lucky, that because so I'm not afraid. Yeah, let me just let just me make my last point. Let me make my yes. Let me make my last point. I was So so I'm so so I'm so I'm so I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm challenging him to say I don't. I'm not going to interfere with him. He must go and write a story, having taken everything into account, and and he must make a distinction between what is stolen, what is irregular, what is wasteful. But I think that we need to have a proper informed Last point, discussion uh, as South Africans, not the, the, not the noise that you are making. Nomarasha, no Nomarasha. No, hold on, hold on. Nomarasha. Uh, uh, I'm so okay, very no. disappointed by our leaders. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing which I'm going to say. All our political leaders, which we put them in parliament. I'm coming from Kulumane, which is a, a membership-based organization of all these uh, members who are voting for our leaders to be in parliament, to talk for us, to be accountable. There's accountability which has been put. We did make sure that we make the, our leaders to be accountable. We've been, we are now 20 years being in this Kulumane, may, giving the direction to our leaders how they should look at this debt capture, which is now is bring by big debate on us as as a as a grassroots level. We've been 
talking about it from long time, from the day one, when our democratic government took place, to say that, yes, we have voted you, but now we are, we, we, uh, we see that there are multi companies. When you, there was, the lady was talking about TRC, this side, of which it was a, just a first step towards, a, mm. towards studying the process of trying to heal or to <coughs> talk about the past. But because it was the process which was going to, it was going to help the community from the grassroots level, they close it. Okay. And we say that the multi, the multi uh, companies must be held accountable. Uh, must be held accountable because what they did, they went away with the investment, including mine, uh, mine industries, all this. And today's government is still doing the same okay. of taking whatever wealthy which is supposed to be given to to help the poor, they are not doing. Now is the third, uh, cap uh, uh, third culprit, which is Gupta. We must go back and ma ask all this to plow back the fruit okay. to the grassroots level. I, th I think it's important. <laughs> we'll give you a I just want to summarize. I, I think it's very. I think it's very important that everyone knows uh, the wonderful work that Noma Russia does in Togoza with victims of apartheid era looting, sexual violence and all of that. And over the years they've been knocking at government's door to ask that they implement some of the recommendations of the TRC including going after the multinationals that have benefited. They did that. But they did that. But the government of a democratic South Africa has been shutting they the door to them. Skills. Yeah. That's what they do. And don't care. Can, can we, William, can we get him and give yeah. Zikisa a chance to speak? She hasn't spoken. And then, wait. wait. Uh, yeah. uh, no, yeah, the government to government to I lose on 93, same, same, same month and same year, Ukresa and Comrade as Abulawa. So, um, Tanam Namanding Sam Luzil. Lago Kuluman Bunabanda Baninga Baba Quadile Samba Nabo. Silogo, I president, Iazga, ya figure a hat of a section. Ya figure Yao Fulamacha Lapan. I figure Lapan. Urama Po Sage law, wa figure Naila, or Langula Abu Mama Colonel Sema Hostel, Batibambula. But he, in the way to have a seriously. For 21 years, man, the Samba Lago Lokulumando, and then the president, the Logiti, Yas Balege, Yas Balege. Tina in the way to have a tati. Nothing about tati in the way. Young and lento leg followed not massy Kuluma, Sesbuya Nagudo, and I say, eh, 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 public protector. Let's go to the University. University. Abu Chef Hate Besina Bola Pana Evet University Nabad B TRC Aban B TRC Lo Mama Loa Puma Lapan Yena Wat Yena Bavala Namate thousand Baniga Bantu U uh uh president Mpegi Uya Yas Londaba na you bishop toot. Hmm. And then as I was I tell a serious in Dubai. Yeah. This is about because one of the recommendations, and we don't talk about this, of the TRC, was that there should be compensation. Yeah. And in Togoza, so many people lost their lives. I, I mentioned the sexual violence and all of that. And uh, you, you've just been saying, that the gentleman has just been saying that they've been knocking at the doors of government and nobody is, uh, is listening. But the suffering began way back and it's still continuing. That's what uh, you're saying. And, and, and already, yeah, just before Zuki I go, Zuki. and reparations is not only the government paying by reparations, it's also if you had worked for a company, the company should also pay yeah. reparations, for, even for those people who died already for their families, yeah. scholarship, and even make you part of the BE, not to make the political tycoons BE partners. They don't want to. Partners. Partners. Don't want to. Um, so I think part of the problem for me in, 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 in kind of the current, our, our political context, is that today it's almost enough because a politician says that something was a mistake, we treat it as a mistake, right? And so the point I'm trying to make is that we have 
the, this, uh, this, this kind of obsession that we have, I think, with um, politics of parliament, which we saw and we are seeing are taking us nowhere very, very, very fast, is that, let me finish, you spoke. She's let's go. with you. So. Let's, 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 let's continue. Okay, give her a chance. Um, is that political parties today, we're all, all, we are all too happy, it almost seems, to be okay with not developing the kind of activism uh, um, um, that is needed to drive real social political change. We are seeing black women organizing in communities. We are seeing, uh, 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 you know, um, 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 uh, 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 laborers in, in rural communities um, um, organizing themselves. We know that, you know, we have Africanists who are leading land occupations across this country. There's a kind of activism that, 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 that is needed to drive actual change. But it's not in the interest of, 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 of political parties, right? Because uh, 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 it's not in the interest of power, right? So ours is to say that when, when Floyd said, for example, that the solution is land, my question would then be, what are you doing to organize black people to start fighting for land outside of marching to, 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 to banks and all those things, right? And so when we're speaking, when we, if we are truly, these are the kinds of stories that we should be engaging if we are serious about any meaningful change. Right? It's not enough that we get to a show and then we're saying that we mustn't use this just for political speak. African people have been organizing themselves. African people were not, I'm not even asking for a, 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 consistent, a consistent politics all the time, more than I'm asking for an honest kind of politics. And we need to understand that some of these issues that, that, that African, genuine issues that African people have are being used for political agendas. Even the current narrative around state capture, we, are, we know that it's suiting, a, a, a people are taking it up because it suits a very, uh, um, 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 you know, changes and part of it with the EFF is this, is this almost obsession with Uche Zuma, right? Which, as if we do. Let him, let him I'll, finish and then let him finish. Mm. And so, my, my point here, Reddy, is that one way that moving forward looks like, if we are serious, is that we need to be as interested in politics of the ballot box as we are in organizing communities around the issues that they really face with the capacity that we have in whatever structures that we are working with. All right. Thank you, Ziggy. Okay, hold on. No, wait, no, wait, God, I'm going to come to you. You, you direct, you made it a specific uh, reference to the EFF and land. Blah, blah, blah. An yeah, so we'll give, a, give him a chance to respond, but there are people who've been that. raising their hands there since we started the show. Please go ahead. You've got the mic. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so first of all, what I want to... Put the mic on okay, your sure. um, What I want to bring across is the fact that... Um, even in our, 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 our arguments and our engagements, I think we're lacking also a sense of definition, right? To say, we're trying to say, what is state capture, one, two, and three, but first of all, what is a state, according to us, and what we understand as a state? Because what I would say, and I'm going to get to my question very quickly, is that, mm -hmm. um, let's, look, man, the state in South Africa, as we conceive of it, was made up by people who, based it on their own foundational and elemental beliefs, without the agency and the influence of black people. And so it is not a surprise today that that same state is able to be captured because it is their rules that are in place that are going to allow them to get away with these things. You know, oh man, is saying, arrest them, arrest them. He knows that the way in which the state and the judiciary, you know, I mean, it, it involves the judiciary legislature, the way in which it is structured <coughs> is in yeah. such a way that they are going to be able to run away with whatever crimes that they do against us as citizens. And so I would like us to really reimagine and reconceptualize a state that does not come from a Western, you know, a, a European kind of setup. And that's why um, that lady there, who's the, uh, you sit on something to do with Oppenheimer, has the, 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 has the, the, the guts to say that she believes in the rule of law. What law? Because that is the law that you came with to our country. That is the law that protects your people. That is why Oppenheimer and his descendants can walk freely even after the crimes that they've made against us. That is the kind of rule of law that you believe in. Unfortunately, that law is not made for us. It is, does not even cater for us. And so what I would like us to do first is to define what we mean by state. Are black people even part of the state? When you try, when you try to think about you know, how different people like Marx Weber, Karl Marx talk about the state. Because some of the issues that are being raised here, you know, are issues that are, are not even about the Guptas anymore, right? I think we've passed the point of the Guptas. 
But what the EFF has been able to do is that they've used the Guptas as a sort of red herring or I don't know, like a signal to say there is a problem generally in terms of how power and, 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 and monopoly of resources is, 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 is you know, relays to people in, in, in South Africa. Can, can you give the sure. microphone to... <laughs> Let's give her a chance, please, everyone listen. Yeah. Good evening. Then, okay. um, I am Zanele Luana. I am from Black First Land First. Um, we cannot have the conversation around state capture in a country of black people where black people continue to be landless, continue to be poor, and continue to be marginalized. What we need to have and what we need to talk about here is how united we need to be as black people in this country to fight white settlers who have monopolized all sectors of economies to make sure that we continue to fight Comrade Zuma, we continue to fight the Guptas, while the Oppenheimer family, while the Rupert family continues to hold the wealth of the country while black people remain poor and landless in this country. But I think it's also important for us to be tolerant for dissenting views because the dominant narrative even in this debate today is pro-white monopoly capital, is against the government, is protecting the interest of the likes of Johan Rupert and the Oppenheimer who control public views of the ordinary people in this country. Allow dissenting views, allow black people to stand up proudly to say that this is our country and only us black people can unite to take our country from white people, the representatives of Oppenheimers who can tell us to move on. Temba, I want to... Hold oh, on, can you get it? Hold on. Temba. Temba, hold on. Hold on, I want you to respond to that. We, we're coming there, we're coming there. Hold on, hold on, Gaten. Temba, I want you to respond to that, particularly because there seems to be a debate between the crimes of today, which we, what do we elevate? In other words, you can't go into the crimes that are being committed today until you account for the crimes of the past. Are we gonna be stuck there? How do we move forward? Well, the, the nation has to move forward. I think the biggest challenge we face, all of us, black, white, young, old, is to make sure that we take the resources that are available in this country and turn them around for the benefit of ordinary Can we still people. go after the resources we that were to, stolen in the past to in, in order to... My view is that let, yeah, let's decide first what we want to do. Take the resources of the country, use them for the benefit of people. Speaker. Secondly, begin to address the issue of people, especially the ruling classes, right? Black and white, who are actually taking advantage of the situation today for their own benefit to the exclusion of the majority of people. So we've got to make sure that we have a functioning strong state. That means we have a properly functioning parliament, we have a judiciary, we have a strong media, we have independent institutions like a public protector so that if something, or especially the prosecution agencies, if somebody breaks a law, steals money, whether it's from a company or from a health department, we must prosecute them. Whether somebody stole money 30, 40 years ago, as indicated, in the, let's deal with them now. But you can't deal with them unless you have institutions like the judges and the prosecution authorities <coughs> that can do the work. Does At the, the moment, fact that we didn't prosecute, and it, it is the post-democratic state, that is a fact. It, there was a recommendation that TRC, I keep saying it. Does the fact that, as you document even in your book, that culprits, people who looted, who got rich on the back of uh, apartheid and exploitation of black labor. The fact that the democratic state chose not to go after them, is that coming back to bite? Should we have, and is there still room? I think really the problem in most countries that have gone through a, a phase of democratization is precisely this. We grapple with how do you deal with elites who've made no vast amount of and money off oppression. To get away with and it. in Zimbabwe today, they are going to grapple with the same thing. Robert Mugabe is no longer, but the system will remain. The real question we need to be asking ourselves from our neighboring brothers and sisters are, are you going to be able to hold to account those very wealthy people who've stripped the assets from the diamond mines, who've moved the cash offshore, who've worked with their partners in China and South Africa and around the globe to make them rich? And we haven't done that. We haven't done that successfully in South Africa. I'd also argue really one of the reasons for that is that we've glorified the, the very wealthy. And I think the question that I want to ask provocatively to ask to, to Mr. Manyi, uh, uh, to Gaten, 
to, to Mr. Montana, to business people around us, and I, I name, name you because you sit here as business people and former, former head of a, of a public institution. How much will be enough? How, do we want to emulate the Oppenheimers and the others who want to show up as much cash as possible? In a country where we have such extreme poverty, this is not acceptable. Because it looks like we're saying the Oppenheimers <clears throat> did it, so don't focus on Absolutely. who's doing it now. Absolutely, yes. we don't want millionaires in our country. We don't want what? We don't want millionaires. We want people to share in this country's wealth. We glorify people that are very wealthy. And, and frankly, no, Gaten, I you, think you, you wish too to be that one day. I wish you want to be a multi-millionaire. No, no, no. We've got to give Gaten. You don't want the most brilliant books that have ever been written in this country. Wait, hold on. Gaten, he's got to have a mic. Where's the yellow microphone? Okay, can I? Okay, sorry, William. We're going to use it. Just quickly. I think first, I want to make three quick points. I want to congratulate you. You have written one of the most brilliant, honest books that has ever come out in this country. And I want to say to you, big up, and you have, we have learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you. Secondly, I got three quick points. I want to stop this thing when you are speaking as black people. You make an example with RDP houses. None of these people want to forever stay in RDP houses. So when you talk about money, oh, so many RDP houses. Like we should be happy when our people are going to get RDP houses. But the third point and the more honest point here, we must be honest. We must be very honest in this country. And we can't blame the EFF. You can't blame any other political party. We should blame the African National Congress. The African National Congress, really what is happening here is heartbreaking. I'll tell you what's happening. The, I call it the corn of Codessa. Uh, and, and I'm not selling anything here. But on the 15th of December, I'm bringing out my book called The Corn of Codessa. Because what happened? They lie. There's people, the constitution was written in the house of Oppenheimer. That's constitution. Well, the constitution. I just want to bring something. Structurally, in this country, it is impossible for black people to come to become billionaires, unless they are in cahoots with, with the previous billionaires. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, can I just, the my last sentence? The Constitution was written in yeah. the, by the Constitutional Assembly, the people we elected, really. No. I think we must talk the facts. Can, yeah. no, I'm, facts not saying, I'm not saying that the very no, wealthy, wait, that the Oppenheimers and the others didn't have interests. No, no, we had Gaten, we had a Constitutional are Assembly, we elected. Yet? Guys, let him Give finish. me a chance. Let, let him finish. You have put what you think a man like me, I can put something on paper without sex. Are you aware? Let me ask you something. Are you aware that twenty six percent of the people that was involved in the negotiation for us who are party spies? in the ANC. Okay. We'll, we'll name them. I don't we know will who name them. Okay. Zuma was spy number one. No. I named them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can I just finish off? I want to give my last sentence. Well, just finish off. Yes. So what I want to say, we should be honest. White people, white people, Particularly rich white people has outmaneuvered us at, at, at Codessa. The killers of Biko, the killers of Ashley Krill, they are still walking here like they've not killed who's, nobody who's important. Fault is that? It is our fault. Whose fault is it? Why didn't no, you prosecute No, that's why I started by saying it's our government's fault. I said even it is not the that's fault not of EFS or chance. anybody. So what I'm trying to say to everybody here, yeah, let me just finish my point, Mom. What I'm trying to say is we must acknowledge we have failed the people. I want that one, you must be very clear. Those people must be in jail. Saudi Arabia has sued us. Russia has sued us. Oppenheimer, Rupert, Ramaphosa, they must be arrested tomorrow. Okay. We'll come to you after him. We'll come to you. He raised his hand first. I'll come to you next. He had his first. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. And, and we'll give you a chance as well. All of us are getting very hot under the collar. But I did I think, promise you after Zugiswa spoke, I know. So everybody is angry and want to speak at once, and we've got time constraint. I'm going to ask you, ask us to just be a little understanding and mature about that. And there's this gentleman as well. The point is this: civil society, civil society okay, have decided on the 30th of November to go and picket at the National Prosecuting Authority, because that is where the current problem lies. That people doesn't want to prosecute the looters the thieves that is even sitting in this room. 
But they talk eloquently about that and that and that. And that's the reason why I think, shut up. The point is basically this. Okay, wait, wait, the wait. Point is basi- the point is basically this. We must prosecute these people. All of them. It doesn't matter what party they belong to. Okay, we've had uh, speakers from the panel and the invited guests. Let's go to a community le- le- uh, member and then I'll come to you. Hold on. Let's let guys. Okay. Right, let's give okay. the community leader. All right. We've got to listen to each other. We've got to listen to each other. All right, colleagues. Okay. Let's give. Let's give. We listened to you. Let's very listen. Very far. We've got. Let's have, uh, let's have a conversation. Huh? Yeah, I know. Hold on. Floyd Kuluma and Abantuba Okay. Okay. Let's listen to my guys. I'm, I'm asking you this from uh, the bottom uh, of my heart. Can we listen please. to Mama at the corner? I'm coming to you next, okay? We did listen to you when you raised your point so eloquently. Let's listen, right? English language. Kulu Mama. Tapped. When all these things are saying, you know, I, I, I've been listening to a lot of speakers here. When you blame EFF, EFF are the kids that started when they see the father who cannot take them to the right path. You you, you know, when you are a father leading the kids, your own children to the darkness or to the uh, the, the deepest. Musima, omkolo. But Hamudima Abba feel a light of taking them out and tell the truth of what the father inside the house is doing. I, I don't see any reason everybody must say, hey, EFF, EFF. EFF has helped the country to tell the country the truth. Open your eyes and ears and listen and see where we are going. Yeah, EFF will to see that. The Guptas, I'm going to talk about it. Ntatezuma, I'm going to talk about you. You have taken South Africa in a drain. And the Guptas. These are tax money, Aruna. But the mama in Barrekisa, they don't pay tax anyway. So the businessmen who are with the Guptas. Then it's okay, Mama Ruhut will arasana now. Connect Mama Arasana now. Thank you two hours. Everybody feels they didn't have to Floyd. Stop. We have to listen. Just keep talking. We'll amplify your volume. They'll hear you at home. Guys. No, basically. No, basically. Listen, the, guys, the listen. The people of South Africa, you have the power. Why aren't you using it? You have the power. The communities have the power. You do. If black people in this country decided that they are not going to buy a particular thing, this economy will suffer. If you decided that this is what we want in the banks and do it that way, you have the muscle. Unfortunately, we underestimate our power. We do. So if we really organize in the communities and take issues, not all of them at the same time, take one thing at a time, and stick to that. You will change the circumstances. The ones, the things that you don't want can go away, but you have to be organized and choose your battles wisely. And, okay, and to, to Floyd, when it's government, minutes. I include you too. When you are in, you are, when you are sitting as one of the 400 in parliament, you are a legislator. And okay. yeah, but you are. And you want to have a You talk? are a legislator. Okay, yes. we have given yes, you a you chance. Are a we have given you a chance. And do you want to speak quickly? I'm going to come to you, and you must respond to what Fugis was saying. Carry on. Just carry on. You can be heard on the yeah. control panel. Just carry on speaking. You so can. I want to build on the previous speaker okay. and the notion of accountability. Just, let's listen, guys. Let's South listen. Africa Even today. Disagree, can we listen? South Africa today is a democracy, which means people can organize, people can speak out, people can talk about the issues that are most important for them, and most important, they can go and vote differently. So if people are not accountable to you and are doing terrible things, you should hold them to account. 
don't re-elect the rascals again. So for most South Africans, the fact that we don't have growth and we have increasing unemployment is their foremost issue. We also have terrible schools for the vast majority of people. And unless we start to say, how are we going to deal with these issues? We're not going to get the 50% of the population who are in poverty out of poverty. And that's some of the most important issues on the table. So we can shout slogans, we can shout at each other, but the fact is that unless we start to think seriously about how we fix this country's economy so that more and more people can get a job and skills, and does that include you're not going to get anywhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 every single one of you, every single, every single one of you finished your point when you were making it, every single person finished, it's fine, you can disagree with her, but have you finished what you wanted to say? No, let me let, say, let finish. just finish, I'm coming to Mzwanele. <laughs> Let's give her a chance. We invite her here precisely because she holds the views that she holds. We'll debate them, but let's let her finish. And finish. So I work for a non-profit organization. I have no, you know, I, I am interested in how we get more and more people to have all the advantages and access to ownership, to starting businesses, okay, to dealing with the issues that we need. That's what you need. Okay. So you can shout and scream as much as you want, but the rule of law protects all of us. The rule of law protects you also, and it gives you a right to speak. It gives everyone a right to okay. speak. Mzwanele, there's your right. I'm giving it to you. Okay, no, I mean, all, all, I want to do, all I want to do now with this one minute I have is to invite young people that look for internships will employ them at ANN7 for internships. Guys, are you going to apply? We already... Skoraji, are you going to apply because they said you are we've not already, a journalist? We've already, like, we've already no. saved 500 jobs. Yeah. We want to do more. No, you, are you going to apply but you are not a real no. journalist? <laughs> <laughs> Must I send my CV to the section where she been or to Mzwanele Mani? <laughs> Floyd, Zugisa asked you something but closing as well. I thought that after Mama spoke, they were going to say the debate is finished oh, because say. she summarized it very well. <laughs> but let us deal with some few issues. Is that uh, not a few, just EFF, be quick. The EFF is the biggest, the second biggest land redistributor in South Africa outside of government. And we're the biggest land distributor without compensation in South Africa. I challenge all researchers. I challenge all researchers and everyone, journalists, to go and audit how much land we have given to the people. We have land, we have led a lot of land struggles that have been successful, where people are residing now comfortably because of our interventions. That is a fact. Now, I'm worried about my sister here because. She tends to criticize the EFF with little facts, you know, like she relies on sound bites to respond to the EFF. The policies of the EFF are there for, you can easily access them. I'll even give you a book uh, to read okay. about that so that you know how to deal with it properly. Okay. Lastly, <laughs> lastly, is that this debate is okay. What I, whatever you think, that's why I can even allow a, a, a Gupta militia that uh, uses blackness to defend corruption to speak here, called BLFL, whatever, whatever, carry first, land first. What did so, you say? The, the, that is why you can allow uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the okay, those people. Only that is a okay. fact. So it's a balanced debate. We have engaged on issues. Okay, we know what has to happen to and what must happen moving okay. forward. <laughs> Thanks for watching the second hour of the big debate. One of our biggest questions is how to deal with the crimes of the past and not inside of the looting that's going on. Next week's big debate. Bye bye. Whoa, whoa, whoa.